Hello everyone, in this video I will make a brief summary about the test I previously mentioned uh, for uh, binder characterization, um, including rotational viscometer test, dynamic shear rheometer test, binding beam rheometer test, and direct tension test. Rotational viscometer test is performed to measure the viscosity of the S4 binder to ensure that they are sufficiently fluid um, for mixing and pumping. So this test is performed at a high construction temperature, which is 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's performed on original binder, so the specimen doesn't have to go through any aging process in the lab. Dynamic shear rheometer test is performed to check two things. One is the rotting potential of the S4 binder, and the other one is the fatigue potential of the S4 binder. Um, because rotting, uh, which is permanent deformation, often happens early in the pavement life, and fatigue cracking often happens later in the pavement life. So before we do the rotting, uh, before we perform this test to check rotting potential, um, the sample needs to go through the short-term aging process. Uh, so we need to perform rolling thin film oven on the test. And uh, if we use this test to uh, check the fatigue potential, um, the sample needs to go through both short-term aging and long-term aging process. So we need to perform rolling thin film oven and pressure aging vessel test on the sample prior to testing. Also, um, the rotting uh, often happens when the temperature is high. So this test is performed at maximum temperature uh, to um, check rotting potential. And it's performed at inter intermediate temperature to check the fatigue potential. Finally, uh, there are two tests to um, check the sample's uh, ability to resist thermal cracking, and these two tests are binding beam rheometer test and direct tension test. Um, the results of these two tests uh, are combined together um, to uh, check the binder's um, resistance to low temperature cracking. And because the low temperature cracking happens at a low temperature, so the, these two tests are performed at the minimum temperature, uh, plus 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, we increase the testing temperature by 10 degrees Celsius in order to reduce the testing time. And also thermal cracking often happens later in the pavement life, so the sample needs to go through both short-term aging and long-term aging process prior to testing. After we went through the test, then you should be able to understand the S4 binder specification table in the performance grading system. So this is a portion of the table so these are the performance grades of the binder. So we should have more grades, but this table only shows a portion of it. And these are the parameters. So the first row is the design maximum, which is the maximum temperature for each grade. And this row is the design minimum, which is the minimum temperature for each grade. And then on original binder, unaged binder, um, three tests are performed. The flash point test, uh, uh, rotational viscometer test, and the dynamic shear rheometer test. The flash point test measures the flash point temperature, which should be, so the minimum is 230 degrees Celsius. So the measured temperature should be larger than this value. And the uh, rotational viscometer test measures the viscosity um, at this temperature, 135 degrees Celsius, which is exactly 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And the measured viscosity should be smaller than this value. And also, its uh, dynamic shear rheometer test is performed on original binder. So this part isn't mentioned on the test book. The test book only mentioned that we perform dynamic shear rheometer test on the binder, uh, which um, 
goes through the short-term aging process in the lab. So actually, in the specific specification system, so there is a, a requirement to perform dynamic shear reactor on unaged binder. So this test is performed at the maximum temperature for each grade, and uh, the rotting parameter should be larger than 1.0 kPa. And then on the uh, binders, uh, which go through the short-term aging process, after we perform the rolling sim film oven test, um, we need to uh, perform the dynamic shear reactor test at the maximum temperature for each grade, and the rotting parameter should be larger than 2.2 kPa. Also, after the rolling sim film oven test, we need to measure the mass loss. So the mass loss should be less than 1%. And then after the sample uh, goes through both short-term aging and long-term aging, we need to perform three different tests. Dynamic shear reactor test to measure the fatigue potential, and then the binding beam reactor test, and also the direct tension test. The uh, long-term aging process, which is the uh, pressure aging vessel test, uh, should be performed um, uh, from 90 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. It depends on the uh, grade. <clears throat> and the dynamic shear reactor test is performed to measure the fatigue potential. So the test is performed at the intermediate temperature of each grade and the uh, fatigue parameter should be less than 5,000 kPa. The binding beam reactor test and the direct tension test are performed at a minimum temperature plus 10 degrees Celsius. Um, the creep stiffness should be less than 300 MPa, and the M value should be more than 0.3 at 60 seconds. And from the direct tension test, we measure the failure strain, which should be larger than 1%. So these are the, um, the required uh, parameters for, the, for different grades. So you can see from this table, um, unlike the previous specific specification systems, um, they require uh, performing the test at a fixed temperature and varying the requirements for different grades of the asphalt binder. But in this performance grade uh, system, um, it requires performing the test uh, at a varying temperature uh, at different uh, critical temperatures, but fixing the criteria for all the um, grades of the asphalt binder. So this philosophy ensures that all the um, asphalt properties meet the specification criteria at uh, critical pavement temperatures. So that's a significant improvement in the specification system.